I had an awesome time in the meet and greet last year, and I can't wait to do it again. I just hope maybe the pig's a little bit smaller this time. <laughs> I'm thinking about trying a different broadhead this year, because I had a bit of a problem with penetration last year. So I'm thinking about trying the three inch swacker broadheads. And we have our last little competitor here. I'm excited for this one. <laughs> Genevieve and I did a live stream in the backyard testing a bunch of broadheads. And one of the broadheads that we tried out in the backyard was that three inch swacker. Right there it is, the Swahackers. The Swahacker massive three inch cut, 150 green. So. It's Swacker, not Swahacker. What? It's Swacker. It's Swahacker? Swacker. No, it's Swahacker. Swahacker. No. You say it Swacker. That's how literally everybody says it. No, that's different, brother. These are Swahackers. Swahacker. <laughs> Still there. Okay. You say it how you want to say it. I really like the looks of these new broadheads, the Swacker 3 inch, but the only problem is, is they're actually a little bit long for my crossbow and they stick out past the end of the stirrup. It's important to me to have that broadhead, the end of your arrow, protected by the stirrup. That's part of the design. And a bigger stirrup would help make that happen. So we ordered a bigger stirrup. It's a little bit longer and now the broadhead sits comfortably inside it. I couldn't have been more excited. Genevieve's excited. We've got Bungie Jr., Bungie the third, all set up to go on this trip. And then things took an unexpected turn. I'm noticing as I'm practicing with the practice point, it's kind of all over the place. And it's not consistent in one way or another, so I can't exactly sight in for the practice point, but it's all over the place. Bungie Jr. had been shooting pretty good recently. We weren't exactly sure what was wrong with it, so we went around, we tightened all the bolts, which were already tight. So I went back out and I put the crank on and I started to cock it again, and the limb breaks. I get it about halfway back and it just snaps and it was really loud. Bungie Jr. has seen better days. Finally happened. Yeah. It finally happened. So that is a, an interesting twist in Crossbow Appreciation Month and an interesting twist before our- the Night before the meet and greet. I didn't exactly know what had happened, so I just threw it forward and I ran back in the house to get my dad. To be honest with you, kind of saw it coming. It took a little bit for it to sink in what had just happened. 285 pound draw weight, awful lot to ask out of those little limbs. I was frustrated with the crossbow, obviously, because I'd been trying to sight in all afternoon and it had taken so long and, I, and now this. That was not in the plans. Luckily, Dad has a nice new Scorpid. <laughs> Genevieve had only shot the Scorpid one time before this. But I'd watched my dad shoot it and I really liked the looks of this crossbow. So in the backyard, I had her shoot it a handful of times, maybe five times or so, to make sure that she felt a little more comfortable with it. So that leaves us with the question, what is dad going to use for the meet and greet? So dad goes back inside and he's grinning and I know what he's doing. He takes Bungie out, he dusts it off, and dad sights it in on a live stream. And Bungie has to step up, right? Come off the bench to save the day. What does Bungie select for that boar hunt? The spinal tap. <laughs> for friend of Bungie Marshall, this one's for you, okay? 577 total grains of arrow weight getting hurled down the crossbow range at a whopping 250 feet per second. Not the fastest arrows, that's for sure, but shot after shot after shot, hitting the mark and doing a great job. Down at the end of the yard, we have the Boar Reinhardt target set up. And I tell my dad just kind of as a joke, hey, why don't you shoot 40 yards at that boar from the top of the yard? Normally on a live stream, it's a little nerve wracking to take shots in front of people because who knows how many people are watching, right? You got hundreds, maybe even thousands of people watching you take a shot live. You get a little nervous about that. And he hits a bullseye at 40 yards with it. Oh! So that's called a bullseye at 40. Did you see the arc on that arrow? It took a while to get there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go down. Let's wrap up this live stream. Let's go down here. And Bring Bungie down. down. Yeah, he deserves to go for a walk with us. <laughs> so I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. I, well, I do know what this means. It means that Genevieve is not using Bungie Jr. tomorrow. 
Well, I know he's not gonna have any problems with accuracy with this. It takes a while to get there, but it gets there. I was aiming, <laughs> that's where I was aiming, the center of this insert. The only problem is I was set on the Schwackers, but the Scorpid is already sighted in for tripans. I had not planned on shooting the Schwackers through the Scorpid. Now, I love tripans, but I'm still kind of a little disappointed because I wanted to try out that big, huge broadhead. <laughs> So what broadheads can I use with the spinal taps on Bungie? Let's try out the Swahackers. <laughs> Just to be safe, we put the practice point for the Swacker on Bungie and Bungie has no problems with it. We're already using different crossbows. Now we're using different broadheads from what we planned on using. And I know that we're gonna have a great time at this meet and greet. <laughs> left a little bit early because we like to get there before everybody else does. We can get set up, we can start to talk to people as they come in, we can talk to the guides. We meet all of the meet and greeters, all the folks who have driven from Minnesota, Virginia, New York, North Carolina, people from all over the country coming to join us here in northeastern Pennsylvania for a hog hunt. Can you believe that? We all set up in front of the boar preserve sign and we take a great group photo together with all our crossbows and everything. We had a great time talking, got a chance to talk about our plans, look at each other's crossbows, and then they got all the buggies warmed up. And then it's time to head out to the woods. Enjoy your world, free of man and I got a chance to walk out to our target area of the preserve with friends of Bungie and got a chance to talk to them, you know, between deep breaths. <laughs> blind last year and the boars had come up that ridge but they stayed just out of range 30 40 yards didn't feel comfortable with that shot didn't know they were coming there's a road down in front of us there's some thick brush and over to our right and then down over to our left is a really steep hill so I get the range finder out I'm looking at the road and the closest end is about 25 yards and then further up it's like 35 yards I'm glad I brought the Scorpid because you know, the other option now is Bungie, who's, that arrow takes a long time to get there, those longer distances. I made jokes about rockets, not rainbows. Today, Genevieve's shooting the rocket, I'm shooting the rainbows. Genevieve and I are whispering back and forth. We're having a great time in that blind, just like we did last year. I'm giving her a hard time about her crossbow. I'm showing off Bungie and how the limbs are all pristine and not broken. <laughs> you know, referring to her crossbow as lefty. <laughs> Beforehand, my dad and I came to an agreement. We have an agreement between the two of us where she's getting the first shot. Because I have the fast crossbow and I'm shooting towards the road over to the left. And it's up to her to stop that animal. I will be the one to stop the boar when I'm ready. He's just filming. That's something I think is important. I've had that conversation with her before. Really, in my opinion, the hunter ought to be the one stopping the animal because that way the hunter knows when the stop will occur. Off in the distance, up on the top of the hill, sure enough, there's a big hog up there. This is a 300 pounder plus, a monster. Kind of reminds me of last year's meet and greet. And I'm thinking, man, if that guy came down here, like with 10 yards or so, 20 yards, get the old bungee out there and take a shot at that with those heavy arrows, that would be an experience. Pretty soon, we see a couple of rams making their way through the preserve. And that was really cool. I'd never seen a wild ram of any kind before. At 
one point they were about 10 yards from the blind they were looking at us. After an hour or so, we hear what we think is a crossbow going off. And the pigs start squealing. I didn't like that. Some friend of Bungie just got lucky. Yeah, the, the pig, not so much. <laughs> we see friend of Bungie, Tim, and his daughter up on top of the hill, and they're after some boars. So we know things are heating up. Not long after that, I'm looking out in the distance again, and I see more movement. Man, I love looking through the trees and seeing movement. Is that not the greatest part of crossbow hunting? We see a group of Russian boars. Brown coats. And they start to head over to where Tim and his daughter are hunting. But they move up the ridge. And they get about 20 yards away before they realize that's probably not a good idea to go up there. They take a 90 degree turn. They start to make their way down towards us. And they're walking directly at our blind, but they're behind a tree, so I really can't tell where they're at. But I tell Genevieve, you gotta get ready. I'm thinking they're gonna come down off the top of that knoll, they're gonna head toward us, but then when they hit the road, they'll turn and go down the road. We'd use the rangefinder, and the edge of that road is actually on the 35 yard line. So if they're on the road, Genevieve would have either a 35 to 40 yard shot. With the Scorpid, hopefully she can get that done. I'm looking out towards the left, I've got the Scorpid about halfway up, and I'm ready to raise that crossbow up and take a shot when they're appearing in view on that road. But that's not what happens. They're going to rain in front of you. They're all here. These boars appear into view right in front of us, and my dad grunts and stops them. Yeah, I screwed up. We got a split second to take advantage of this situation. So Bungie the third and I, we're gonna let her rip. <laughs> I know that's not the shot I was hoping for at all. The arrow sticks in, it doesn't actually go all the way through, and he runs off with that Luminoc up through the woods. We had just agreed that I wouldn't grunt, but I was so concerned I thought she forgot. I didn't want them to get out of sight. I figured the one that already went through was already past her view, but that's the only one that she really had a shot at at that point. I thought she's gonna be shooting at the ones straight out in front of us. We're looking at two different animals. I don't even have the camera on the one that she takes the shot at. That's on me. I see blood dripping down from his neck, so I hit something, and they regroup on the road up the hill from us. When you take into consideration the fact that she's only shot this crossbow a handful of times, plus I stopped him, so she was surprised by when that shot opportunity was gonna take place, it's totally understandable. I don't even see the impact. Genevieve tells me what happens. She says that she sees a lot of blood and we can see the boars moving back up the hill. But I notice that they stop, they kind of regroup. And I'm thinking, man, Bungie can get this done real quick, like as if my camera work was not bad enough already. I hand the camera to Genevieve. He goes, here, take this. And I'm like, okay. So I take the camera. And I pick Bungie up who's already loaded, ready for business, already sighted in, as we know. <laughs> I'm trying to film, but I'm not sure which boar he's trying to shoot. I'm kind of thinking, man, if I get a shot at Genevieve's boar, if she made a bad shot, maybe I can get a second shot on that and make her afternoon a little bit easier. Her arrow is on the other side of these boars as they're moving back up that ridge. I can't tell which one she's already hit. But then I start to think it really doesn't matter because if I shoot the same one, that's a good thing. If I shoot a different one, that's just as well. I'm using the windowsill as a, as a shooting rest, and I'm watching these boars. And they're all grouped up together. There's one in front of the other. So I can't get a shot. But it's not over yet. We're not done yet. They keep moving away from us, but in a straight line where I still have visibility. They move from 20 to 25, eventually to 30 yards, and they get to the edge of the road at 35 yards. There's no way you can take a shot quite yet. Finally, when they get to the other side of the road, they spread out enough where I have a broadside shot at one of the boars. 40 yards with my older, slower crossbow. 577 grain arrow, a swacker three inch, 150 grain broadhead. Bungie and I, we're gonna take that shot.
That was the longest shot I've ever taken on an animal with bungee. From the time the arrow leaves bungee to the time that it hits the boar, I bet I blinked twice. <laughs> it was almost comical. It goes, tonk. <laughs> the nice thing about an older, slower crossbow and heavier arrows, man, you can just sit there and watch that arrow go. This one seems like a good shot. It hangs it right where I wanted it. The boar had moved forward a little bit as he started to lurch and get out of the way. It dropped a little bit but it did its job. And I'm thinking at that angle, with him slightly quartering away, that's a good shot. We got a green one and a red one going off in the distance. <laughs> I don't know, 40 yards. That was a 40 yard shot, 40 yard shot. We got a green Luminock. Can't see him anymore. I think I heard somebody going down. A green Luminock and a red Luminock running off. We're kind of cramped in this blind, but we each took a shot. So I shot the farther one away, and you shot the close one. Was it bleeding? I did see. Okay. I hit it in the neck, I think, but there was we'll blood coming go out. Go look at so. video. I'm going to turn the NITAC cam off. I don't know why we care. We don't need more batteries. I can still see your Luminoc moving. Oh, jeez. It's going to be the night to side. We're going to give hers a little bit more time. So we start to track my dad's, and there is a real thick blood trail. Yeah, hit something. Blood. That's that. pretty decent. Now spin around and show them how far that is right there. <laughs> That's a nice shot right there. 40 yards, 40 yards with this old jalopy. <laughs> look at this blood trail. Walk right that up that. Get right up that. Yeah. Right over here, look at this. Genevieve, why is your camera shaking? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a little nervous though. <laughs> These little preachers are going to get charged yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. You shouldn't have to worry about that. No, we'll let them give them a little time. Yeah. We'll be fine. Yeah over here oh man that's look at good that. yeah well he went up in here look at that i don't think i've ever followed a blood trail that was this impressive what that means about the broadhead i don't know but i was pretty happy with it now the slacker there if you look at those broadheads they got a one inch cutting diameter on the entrance wound but they open up inside the animal three inch cut on the way out the fact that i had this big of a blood trail this much blood on the ground suggested to me that Maybe I got a pass through. Pretty easy blood trail. The blades might be hanging out the other side of this animal. We get to the top of the hill, no problem finding this boar. Everything worked out well, I found it, no problem. Really nice blood trail. This is the exit wound, so that's a three inch hole from the swacker going through, the swacker doing its job, and so far so good. Now we've gotta go locate Genevieve's boar. Look at that, man. Now, the other great thing about this is I'm in the one shot, one kill club. Bungie is in the one shot, one kill club. How cool is that? The previous meet and greets, I'm a two shot kind of guy, a double tap club member. We found my dad's boar without too much of a problem. So now it's time to go after mine. I really want to thank the guides at the Tioga Boar Preserve. They have always treated me and friends of Bungie and my daughter Genevieve very, very well. I can't say enough about them. This is no different. <laughs> Genevieve's struggling a little bit here. We are looking for that boar. We got to find it. Despite the shot being that far forward, we do find a good blood trail. We follow the blood trail down the hill where we think mine is bedded down somewhere. They're peeking down over the bank over there just to see if they could see him on the other side of the cliff over there. So we're just going to hang back just in case Dad has to cock this again. They locate that boar. I'm going to cock this for Genevieve, get her all set up here. I remember how to do it. Are you ready? Yeah. Ooh. All right. So, are you ready, Genevieve, to enter the double tap club? Yes, sir. <laughs> You're on safe. I'm going to give you this. I'll hold on to this. And you can select your arrow. The way my boar is laying, I can't take a shot from standing on the ground. There's a log in front of it, there's some brush in front of it, and it's laying on its side, so it's just not a good shot to take. But luckily, there's a stump that I could stand on. Thank you.
I am so proud of how Genevieve is handling this stressful situation. This year I'm proud to say that I made an improvement from the triple tap club last year, and I am now in the double tap club. That's an improvement. That's pretty good for a second generation crossbow hunter, and I'm proud of her. I'm actually studying to become a taxidermist, so I've started to collect a bunch of ideas for what I want my boar mount to look like. And I think what would look the best is the boar broadside and looking towards me from the left just like he was when I shot him the first time. Genevieve and I both have our wild boars collected. What a great way to end this meet and greet, spending time with other friends of Bungie while we were waiting for our boars to be processed. I wanna thank all of our meet and greeters for coming to this year's meet and greet. It was a pretty stressful one for me. Pretty stressful for Genevieve too, but looking back, maybe it was meant to be. I think it really was meant to be with Dad and Bungie. Bungie keeps calling me back. So much for my dad, like in rockets, not rainbows. Does this mean that we'll be going into the fall seasons with me shooting Bungie and Genevieve carrying Bungie the third? I'm not exactly sure what crossbow I'm going to be hunting with this fall, but you're just going to have to stay tuned and find out. Until that time, all hail Bungie. In the meantime, I hope you'll enjoy these memes I made about the whole thing. <laughs> Looks good. I like your shirt. Thanks. I like your shirt. <laughs>